بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمد ونصلي على رسوله الكريم أما بعد. So this Mubarak Deen that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has blessed us with this nعمت and bounty of iman. Effort needs to be made in that direction all the time. Shaitan will come and try to distract us and based on these circumstances which we call it circumstantial deen whether it's a place, time, person, condition or routine will that deen terminate, it will cease to exist. One of those is zaman, time. So does a person bring amal in their life because it is the time of Ramadan? Does he read Salat because it is the time of Juma? Does he wear Islamic clothing on the day of Eid because it is Eid? But when that circumstance, that day, that month ends, then his deen also ends. Ulama well, explained that the sign that an amal is accepted is a person has tawfiq to do that amal again. So the amal that I was doing in Ramadan, if it's perpetuating after Ramadan, it is a sign of acceptance. So we need to check ourselves all the time. The fact that Allah has given a person the tawfiq and the opportunity. There are so many people that have money, but they haven't been for Hajj. There are so many people who have health, but they don't read their Salat. We were in Jamaat in UK, and there was one brother Jamaat approached and he came to the masjid and he was a resident of Makkatul Mukarrama in front of the Baytullah and he said I lived in front of the Haram for 27 years I did not get tawfiq to even read one Salat in the Haram I did not even get tawfiq to read one Salat in the Haram. So in the eyes of Allah, Qabiliyat Sharnayhe Qabuliyat Sharnayhe That having asbab and means and wealth and everything else that a person can have is not a condition in the eyes of Allah. Somebody have, might have a great IQ. That's not a condition for Allah. But Qabuliyat, am I accepted in the eyes of Allah? Is my amal accepted? That's what we need to be checking all the time. The bottom line is in Akhirat is what will be my condition? And a person who has this fervor and desire for Akhirat, they, they aim in, they work in towards a target. And that's why in these Mubarak days, we need to fix a target. This is the amulet I'm going to do. This is the time. This is the quantity. This is my target. And we have to look at history. Last Ramadan, five years Ramadan, 20 years Ramadan, what's my graph of progress? Any business, you look at the financials of the current year, they look at the financials of the last 10, 15 years, then they give you an accurate valuation. The stock market, stock exchange value is based on the history. What is my history in the past? What have I achieved? Which targets have I uh, completed? What are my targets now currently? What are my flaws? What did I do wrong in the last Ramadan? What I did wrong in my life? These all need to be documented. The husband, the wife, the children, the family need to sit down and have a mashwara. And we need to have a target, a schedule for progress. One Buzruk went to the marketplace to buy some vegetables. He paid for it. When the vendor checked the notes, he noticed they were fake. So he told Abuzrok, I cannot accept these notes, they are fake. I'll have to take back the vegetables. As soon as Abuzrok heard this, he fell unconscious. The person tried to make effort to revive him. After regaining consciousness, he said, I'll give you the vegetables for free, don't worry. Abuzrok said, I'm not worried about the vegetables. I'm worried on the day of Qiyamah when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will do my Hisab Kitab and if Allah tells me my A'mal were fake if Allah tells me that the A'mal that you did in the world were fake you did it for show, you did it for this reason what will my condition be? 
So this opportunity, Allah has given us life, Allah has given us health, Allah SWT has given us wealth, Allah SWT has given us Iman, Allah has given us this Mubarak month of Ramadan. نِعْمَتَانِ مَغْبُونٌ فِيهِمَا كَثِيرٌ مِنَ النَّاسِ أَسْحَدْ وَالْفَرَغُ Many people, Nabi Alayhi Salaam said, are negligent of two things. We do not take this opportunity. Is sihat when you have good health and farag free time. Allah has given us health. Allah has given us free time. Look at this as a very, very great opportunity. When a person understands this as an opportunity, you will maximize and you will utilize it properly. There was a professor who boarded a boat and as he boarded, he was speaking to the sailor. So he asked the sailor a question, the captain of the ship. Do you know biology? He said no. He said ecology? He said no. He said zoology? He said no. He said physiology? He said no. So the Prophet said, what, what do you know? You will die of uh, illiteracy. You will die an ignorant person. So the sailor, the captain said, I, I do this for a loving, it suffices for me, it fulfills my need. Whatever you're talking about is of no significance to me. So the professor laughed at him and said, you will see. So it happened that they came to a place, they knocked a uh, iceberg, the ship started sinking. So the captain told the professor, do you know swimmingology and escapology from sharkology? So obviously the prophet is scream, oh he's in a panic, no, no, I do not know. So the, the sailor warned him, he said, well then sharkology will have to eat your headology and you will have to dieology because of your mouthology. So sometimes a person thinks so, he's doing the right thing, but have we consulted with the ulama, have we consulted with the mashayik? Everything in our daily life, are we making mashwara? We got a, a book for recipes, because we need to perfect our recipes, our cooking. We've got lawyers for our advice, we've got accountants for our books. For all our dunya we need, we've identified people. When I got a problem, this is the electrician I'm going to contact. Oh, my car breaks down, this is the mechanic I'm going to contact. For all our dunya we need, we've understood that we needed to go to specific people to remedy that. Have I understood that for my problems in Akhirat and for my solutions in dunya, I need to go to the people that will resolve this? Otherwise, the sickness will remain and a person will not even know. We need to go to the experts. One lady ran into a surgery for an emergency. So she got admitted in the emergency ward. As the doctor came in, she was screaming. She was in pain. So the doctor came in and said, show me. So she pressed on her ankle and she screamed. She pressed on her knee and she screamed. She poked her head and she screamed. And she was screaming with pain. So the doctor said, give me a minute. Let me think about it. So he did the assessment, did the diagnosis, and he said, my evaluation is that your problem is you've injured your finger. You've injured your finger. So we need to go to the experts and identify all those opportunities for all these bounties that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us. Otherwise, when you wake up, the seconds that have passed will never come back. The breath that we have breathed will never ever be recuperated. The health that we have will never remain the same. And the life that we have, we don't know how long we're going to live. So we need to plan for our akhirat. We need to plan for our future. And the opportunity, the time is now. Not tonight, not tomorrow, not next week, not next year, not when I get set, not when the lockdown is over, not whenever. My chance, my opportunity is now. It lies in my hands, the key is in my hands, and if anybody is going to stop me from my akhirat, is me. Not conditions, not people, not circumstances, nothing. I am the only barrier for my akhirat. That's so they say, he who controls the present, controls the past. And he who controls the past, controls his future. Yesterday is history, 
tomorrow is a mystery. Today is a gift. And that's why we call today what? We call it the present. Because this now, this opportunity is now, now, now what I have it. They say, if you want to know the value of life, then ask a dead person. He'll tell you what is the value of life. Can you know the value of 10 years? Ask a couple who are madly in love with each other. And after 10 years of a happy marriage, one of them dies. If you know the value of one year, ask a student who failed his final exam. If you know the value of one month, ask a mother who gave birth prematurely. If you know the value of one week, ask the editor of a newspaper. If you know the value of one hour, ask the person who must explain. If you know the value of one minute, ask a drowning person. If you know the value of every second, ask a doctor on the operating table. And if you know the value of one hundredth of a second, then ask that Olympic silver medalist who lost the gold because of that one hundredth of a second. So this is an opportunity. And when a person strikes this opportunity and decides that I'm not going to do this hummel because of this time only. I make a niyat. I'm going to read tilawat of Quran. I'm going to make one khatam a day. I'm going to make ten paras a day, five paras a day, three paras a day, whatever our target is. I'm going to read salat. I'm going to read my nawafil, tahajjul, ishraq, awabin. I'm going to read my morning and evening idea. I'm going to do uh, a get up for tahajjul salat. I'm going to spend ten, fifteen, twenty, half an hour, one hour in dua. All these amal, I make a niyat, Allah, I'm going to do it for my whole life. Not because of the Mubarak month, this time, circumstantial. Then Allah say, when deen is done for the sake of deen, because it's the Amr and the command of Allah, then Allah will give a person enjoyment in deen. So it's like how you eat an apple and you get the sweetness of that apple on every bite, you will get the sweetness of deen. You should explain like how two people who after Maghrib are having supper, the ecstasy and the enjoyment of each one is different. One fasted, the other didn't fast. The onlooker is seen, both of them are eating. But the one that fasted is knowing how much enjoyment he is getting. To say the sign, the sign that we are making that amal for Allah is when ibadat becomes difficult to stop, not to start. When you read in Quran, to close the Quran is difficult, not to open the Quran. When you make in dua, to end the dua is difficult, not to take our time for dua. To finish your salat is difficult, not to get onto the masallah. When 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 a, when a onlooker sees somebody in a restaurant eating food and he's enjoying that food, from outside on the window, we see the person is eating very strong food, filled, food with, filled with chilies and masala. Every bite that he takes, he's crying. And every morsel he takes, he cries more. The onlooker outside looks at this person and says, Bishara shame is suffering. We feel him sorry, we feel pity for him. But he himself is knowing he's, he's the ecstasy, the pleasure, the enjoyment that he's getting. Nobody else can, can explain that. So Ahlul Layli, this poet says, Ahlul Layli fi Laylihim aladhu min Ahlil Lahwi fi Lahwihim. The people of the night, the pleasure and the enjoyment they get cannot be compared and equated to the pleasure and enjoyment that the people of the dunya get in the dunya. Somebody's playing sports. Time goes so far. Where did the time go? Some people love enjoying watching TV, movies, etc. The whole night when Fajr Hassan goes. Somebody's playing games, PlayStation. Entire night goes. Where? Where did the night go? The people that have gotten their maqsat and objective that I am obeying Allah because it is the Amr of Allah and my Amir Allah has co commanded me and I love Allah. Majnoon was by the well. Layla came, she said take out water. So in olden days there were wells, he was taking out water. She never said stop. So he continued taking out the water. The evening she came back and she said stop. Somebody asked him Majnoon, you were the whole day at the well taking out water, there was nobody there. 
He said, my Leila said, take out water. She never said, stop taking out water. When she said, stop, then I stopped. شهر رمضان الذي أنزل فيه القرآن هدى للناس This is the month to draw, to take as much hidayat from the khazana of Allah. If anything was more important, people are panicking, what's the remedy, what's the cure? Kulanji is sold out, disinfectants are sold out, everything to do with this virus. If there ever was on earth more dangerous and more disastrous is the virus of not recognizing Allah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq of making amal. Wa akhiru da'wana anilhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.